Uh, okay, let's just try to look at that proof. <clears throat> so here's what happens. I alter my point, that's my A point, bold face A, and I gave the point an increment. That's my X bold face point. So I changed my argument, and I need to convince you that the change of a function from this point to, th to this point will be infinitesimally small in comparison to the, this distance, this red vector. So the proof goes like that. You just, you just take this difference, and you split it, you, you, take, you take this change, and you split it in two sub-changes. One of them horizontal one, and one of them vertical one. And for each of that, you present your own controls, your own estimate. For each of that, the proof tries to convince you that this one will be infinitesim infinitesimally small in comparison to the, I mean, the function, the change of the function from this black point to this corner will be infinitesimally small in comparison to the distance, the blue distance. And then the upper one, the same story. Two slides do the same thing, look at this. So, and then the, this actual control, the actual estimate is done by some results from the first year. Well, in particular, you can see it here, the mean value theory. So look what it says. The mean value theorem, if you remember, it says this, that you can always uh, replace the difference of the function in the endpoints. And that's what's happening here. You see, we take the difference of the function in the point x0 plus h1. h1 is the increment, the horizontal increment, or horizontal part of the increment. And why not? So this point on the left-hand side, that's the corner point. This. And x0, y0 is the original black point. So the change of the function between these two points can be replaced by the derivative in some middle point times the increment of the argument. That's exactly the statement of the mean value theorem. Now, because the derivative is continuous, because the derivative is continuous, I mean, in the, we don't like this we don't like this factor in front of the increment because it's a factor which lives in some intermediate point. We'd like to have a factor which lives exactly in the original black point because that's what we have in the Jacobian. And so here the continuity comes and helps because I want to replace this selected factor with the factor with this number in the point x0, y0. In, in general, they're not identical, but because of continuity, we can make them small or by or actually if you just uh, open this absolute value you can expect something like this so the difference between the derivative in the corner point and the derivative in the original black point because of the continuity it can be controlled by some number epsilon like so so if you just replace replace this factor with the right hand side here, that's what you're going to end up with. And that is, if you look carefully, you can, I mean, the experienced analyst here can see this infinitesimally small increment. Look at this. We got F. Oh, what's the here? We got just, uh, let me just quickly go back, back to the infinitesimally small definition. Let me, just, let me just go back here. Look at this, what it says. It says F of X take F of A, then take linear factor, so difference between the arguments times some number or matrix, numerical matrix, and then something smaller than the difference between the arguments. Just take a picture of that. And now let's just, I mean, take a picture with your eyes of that, and let's just go back here. Ah, and here, here. That's exactly this. Difference of the function in the x point and the original point, and then the linear factor. And then something, look at this smaller than the increment, because we got the increment here, h1, and then another small factor, epsilon. That's my infinitesimally small factor comes in. It's not a formal proof, but it's sort of explanation of the O notation and why this works, well, to some extent. Right here, you can see it already with some effort. That's my f of x, that's my f of a, I mean, when I say f of x, both face, f of a, Bold face, L, that's the L that plays the role of L. That's the difference of X and A, and that's the difference of X and A. And this epsilon, that's my little O. 
which makes it smaller than the increment. And that's the whole idea of this thing. So that's how you estimate the increment across the blue section. For the, for the B section, for the right section, you do the same thing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it just changed instantly. I mean, the slide changed instantly. For the blue section, again, the same story. That's the x not h1, h, uh, h2 point. That's the black point at the top. This is a corner point. You use MVT again. And if you look down at this line, at the very back, at the very end of the slide, you can again see this little O writing. Function in the endpoint. Function in the function in the original point. Some numerical factor times the increment of the argument, which is this time h2, and then minimizing something which pushes even lower this epsilon two dash times the increment of the argument. Okay. Well, if you combine these two increments together, it was done here in this in this in these lines, you will end up with the complete O notation right here. Look at this. It's just facing, it's just looking at us right here. Function in the original point, function in the sorry, the other way around. Function in the final point, this upper uh, black dot, a uh, black point, uh, function in the original point, lower black point, and then look at the final right hand side. Matrix numerical factor, I mean matrix constant factor, increment of your x, x, and then increment of the x times something which makes it even smaller. This epsilon now comes here as a factor. 